Okay, let's look at part B of this question. This was the um, slightly more difficult part to figure out. Um, so we're trying to figure out what is the um, E field anywhere inside of the um, sphere of big R. So to do that, we'll set up our, um, we have a little Gaussian sphere here. And we're going to do our Gauss's law here, uh, E dot DA is equal to Q inside over epsilon naught. And the thing that we have to keep in mind here is that um, R is not the same everywhere. It's constantly changing. So we can't just plug in this R into our row and get out the sum of all of the charges in this little Gaussian sphere because here it's a little bit less, here it's a little bit more, more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Um, or actually, I guess it's less because it's down in the denominator. Okay, so we're going to actually have to figure out what the charge inside is and then plug that back into this equation. Okay, so the charge inside, well, it's going to be extremely similar to what we just did. <clears throat> the charge inside, we'll take a circle that's inside of our Gaussian sphere, and we're going to make a thin little shell of thickness dr. And what is the volume of this little shell? Well, remember, dr is going to zero, so it ends up being the derivative of volume, which is area. So it's going to be the area, 4 pi r squared dr. Um, and that will equal dv. So now what we want to do is sum up all of the little tiny shells that can fit into this Gaussian sphere and um, multiply those, each of those, by our um, uh, uh, charge distribution row. So we'll set up the integral. And this is going to equal the charge inside. So Q inside will equal the integral of rho. So we'll write rho in here, which is Q over 4 pi big R, little r squared, times this right here, 4 pi r squared dr. And we're going to evaluate the integral from 0 to little r, to the extents of our Gaussian sphere here. OK, so we get a bunch of cancellations, 4 pi is the r squared, 4 pi r squared, and then we are, we're left with q over r dr. q and big R are constants, so we get q over r integral from 0 to little r of dr. And you could think of this as being 1 times dr. So what's the antiderivative of 1 with respect to r? Well, it's just r. OK, and so we're evaluating r from 0 to r. So we just get um, q r little r. And that is our charge inside. So if we plug this back into our equation, we get, um, oops, lost track here. We get qr r. So we get the total charge divided by uh, big R 
times little r over epsilon naught. And we want to find E, so we're going to divide both equations by um, dA, because remember that this E dA just becomes E times A, because at all points, the um, inside of big R, our um, electric field is pointing out, and so our vectors are um, have an angle of zero between them. Okay, so then this whole thing gets divided by R. Let me just clean this up a little bit here. This is Q R over R epsilon naught, and then we're going to divide all of this by the area of big R, which is going to equal 4 pi R squared, and this comes down into the basement. We'll put this up into this part of the equation, so we just have one fraction. So we get QR over big R epsilon naught 4 pi R squared. And look at that. That is exactly what we want. The um, R, this R will get canceled with one of those, and we get Q over, and I can pull the 4 pi epsilon now out to the outside as my K, right? 4 pi epsilon naught R and little r. And the next part of the equation says, do we get the expected value at the surface when R, little r equals big R? So when little r equals big R, we should be able to treat this sphere, no matter how the charge distribution works, as if all of the charge were at one single point. And we know that the uh, formula for a charge at a point is Q over R squared, KQ over R squared. And look what happens when we let little r become big R, we get R squared. So we get KQ over R squared. So that's how that's solved. Hope that was helpful.